if you take a look at a group like Group B, mm -hmm. where we have Senegal, Zimbabwe, Malawi, and Guinea, this is a group that there's never been a champion within the AFCON. Mm -hmm. No team within that group has ever won the AFCON. Mm -hmm. Senegal have been two-time finalists, 2002, their golden generation under coach Bruno Mechu. If you can remember the days of Tony Silva, Ferdinand Kohli, Omar Daf, and, and Lamine Diata, the current coach Ali Usise, the late Papi Buba Diop, the likes of um, the Ella Jusino Diouf, Khalilu Fadiga, and Henry Kamara. These were the golden generation of the Senegalese football. Mm. This is 2002. 2002. You remember they were having someone like Julius Bukandi? When Julius Bukandi, that's, that's yes, 92. That's 92. way back, yes. yes. But this is about the golden generation. Mm. And they made it into the finals in Mali. Mm -hmm. Quite apart from that, they took the Senegalese team to the World Cup quarterfinals, becoming the second team after Cameroon to have ever read the quarterfinals of the World Cup. You're going to remember that mm. Cameroonian setup in 1990 mm. under coach Valerie Nepomiachi. The likes of Jean, uh, this former goalkeeper Jean Jacques Sungu, Thomas Ntumonkunu, Joseph Antoine Bell, Mfedi Mbo, Makanaki. Jujin Ekeke, Jean Ongeni, the list go, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. And this team beat the hell out of Argentina with Diego Armando Maradona. In the opening game? Yes, in the opening with game. With nine men? With nine men. Mm -hmm. Francois Omambik mm -hmm. was the man on target. Mm -hmm. So you saw that this Senegalese team with the golden generation, they were in the quarterfinals in 2002, become the second, and then our own country, Ghana, became the third country. In 2010. To have ever read the quarterfinals in 2010. So. Mm -hmm. I would say, after having this generation, this is about the best quality that the Senegalese team have. Imagine having someone like. But we Sadio saw their Mane. opening game, Senegal. Yeah, they, they weren't were convincing. Not that great. They weren't mm. convincing. Imagine mm. having Sadio Mane at Liverpool, having Edward Mendy at Chelsea, having Ibrahim Mbaye at Bologna, having someone like Buna Sa at Bayern Munich, formerly for Olympic Marcel, having someone like Fadi Balotouri at AC Milan, having Papi Aliou Sisi of Olympiacos, having Khalid Koulibaly, one of the top-notch center defenders when it comes to world football in general. In midfield, Idrissa, Idrissa Ghana guy, that's not any introduction. He was with Aston Villa, he came to Everton, he's now playing at the Paris Saint-Germain, the capital city of France. Mm -hmm. Having someone like Sheku Koyati, that Crystal sounds Palace. like a good team. So you're picking Very that Senegal team. should be yeah, the, the, the top no, favorites for the if, tournament. If, if, you, if you look at the current crop of players that they have, you might be tempted to say they are one of the hot favorites. But they weren't convincing. Their group, they have Guinea. Guinea were finalists in 1976. Mm. You know, that was the time that we were having half year club. They were dominating on the continent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They won in 1972 against SC Villa. They won in 1975, and they won in 1977 against Accra Sofok. Half year. That was, yes, that mm -hmm. was a year Accra Sofok did the miracle of Elwak mm -hmm, mm -hmm. against Mufulira Wanderers from Zambia. Mm -hmm. So these were the days that the Guinea have probably the, their golden generation. Petit Sori, Bengala Sila, Amara Turi, Papa Kamara, and Sharif Suleimani. That's Suleimani. the 76 team of Guinea yes, that you are mentioning? Yes, yes. Okay. And Sharif Suleimani was mm -hmm. the the African best footballer of the year in 1972. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to have this relationship called Ghana, Guinea, Mali. Mm -hmm. During the days of Modi Bukita, the president of Mali, and then Sekou Touré of Guinea, and our own Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. So the African best footballer year, football of the year would also tend to be Ghana, Guinea, Mali. Oh, I see. When they started giving it. That's interesting. Ibrahim Sunday won it in 1971. Mm -hmm. Even before that, you have um, this, this person called... Oh, this person from, from Mali. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from Mali. Oh. Is it Keita? Yeah, Keita. Mm -hmm. Keita. Mm -hmm. Keita won it in 1970. Ibrahim Sandi won it in 1971. And Sharif Suleimani won it in 1972. Mm -hmm. So Sharif Suleimani was part of the great or the golden generation of Guinean football. There was this commentator called Harry Thompson. Yes, of GBC. Yeah, of GBC. He was one of the best commentators, not even in Ghana, on the continent that a lot of people used to follow. Whenever he's mentioning the names of this place, you'll be marveled. Hmm. Petit Suri, Bengala Sila, Amara Turi, Papa Kamara, Sharif Suleiman. Hmm. And they were in the finals in 1976, losing out to Morocco. And that's the one and the only after the Moroccans have ever won the Afghan. Okay, so at this stage, 
uh, does Nigeria, by their performance, become one of the favorites after Nigeria the opening round of matches? Nigeria has always been a favorite when it comes to the AFCON. Mm -hmm. Since 1984, up to date, apart from Ghana 2008, that we eliminated in the quarterfinals, mm -hmm. and those AFCON tournaments that Nigeria have failed to show up, whether being they've been, they've, they didn't qualify or they, they've been banned, Nigeria has always been within the last four, four. from 1984 up to date. Apart mm -hmm. from the tournament that they've not shown up, whether they've not qualified or they've been banned. Apart from that 2008 quarterfinals, we beat them courtesy the late Manuel Junior Agogo and then Michael Asian after Yakuba Igbini scored from that spot kick. Mm -hmm. Nigeria has always been in the last four. And Nigeria has never lacked quality. Check those who started to get this game. Maduka Okoi. You said Nigeria have always been the last four since Cannes 2008. Since 1984, apart from those tournaments that they failed to qualify, or, or you mean they, all the 96 up. tournaments where they didn't show up? Yes. We know about the you know, political there, there is a history to that. Yeah, you remember that, in yeah. 1995, there was the killing of this person who was rising up against the general Sanya Bachak. The, the Ogoni killing, yeah, the yeah, cancer yeah, yeah. So after that, the, the then government of South Africa under late Nelson Rulilala Mandela, a.k.a. Madiba, Criticized the, the government of General Sani Abacha. So that brought a rift or tension. So Abacha between, decided that the Nigerians so were Abacha not going decided, to the tournament. So after, after the Nigerians decided not to show up, they were banned in the subsequent tournament, which was Burkina and Tate. So they failed to show up in, in 1996 and 1998. And they were christened by Abacha as the yes, Super Eagles. Yes. Mm. So apart from these tournaments that they've not show up, and those ones that they've not qualified, like 2017, mm -hmm. like 2012, Mm -hmm. From 1984 up to date, Nigeria has always been within the last four. Uh, let me challenge you on that. In 2008, when we hosted, yes, I, the last I said four? apart from 2008. Ah, okay. And okay. those okay. ones okay. that they've not show up, they not show up. Okay. Whether they've been banned or okay. they've okay. they've not qualified. Yeah. 2008, we eliminated them. Yeah, in the we quarter eliminated finals. them in the quarterfinals. You All know, right. we topped our group in a, a that included the likes of Namibia, Morocco, mm -hmm. and Guinea, mm -hmm. and they came second. They in were playing group, in, at Esipo. Yeah, Takradi. Yeah, mm -hmm. They played alongside Mali, the Eagles of Mali, Les Elephants de la Côte d'Ivoire, mm -hmm. and then Les Ecourelles or Squirrels of Benin. You could did see. you speak French? I did a bit of French at the <laughs> <Jesus life>. <laughs> <laughs> All the messages I'm getting are very excited about well, your, your mm, presentation. Les Ecourelles, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so yes, we talked about Nigeria. So you're saying that Nigeria, uh, by default, we should assume that they'll be in the they last four. Are always, they are always a hot favorite. Mm. And they always want to live by their standard. They have their standard. Genotro took them to the last World Cup qualifying rounds that we're going to be. Mm. But they saw that he wasn't up to the challenge. They are not playing good for Despite the fact that they are winning, mm -hmm. they decided to give him the sack. So who is their coach now? It's for their former player, Austin Guavon. Austin Guavon, yeah. Austin Guavon. But that was one of the first time their former yeah, player. The, Sam Siasia has coached yeah, them. Sam Siasia the late Stephen Keshi. The late Stephen Keshi. Austin Guavon. Okay. Um, um, the, the late Amodu Shaibu. Uh, there was also uh, Sandy Olise. Sandy Olise coached them within 2015. Okay. Yeah, okay. 2015. He coached, I, I think his stint was even less than a year. So they have a former Super Eagles, former Augustine Super Eagles, yeah. He was in the famous uh, 1994, 1994 squad. World Cup Arguably, the best ever squad a national team of Africa has ever paraded at the World 1994. Cup. 1994. You, you think so? Yeah. Peter Rufai. In the goal, yeah. Yeah, Peter Rufai, Chidi Nwanu, mm -hmm. Ben Iroha, mm -hmm. Uche Ikechuku, mm -hmm. Austin Eguavon, the late Stephen Keshi. My guy, yeah. Ole, Emmanuel Sande Amunaki, Olise, Amunike. Emmanuel Amunike, yeah. um, Amokachi. Mm -hmm. Dan Amokachi, yeah. Austin J.J. Azuka Okocha. No, that's, that's a serious yes. thing. That's a serious, Koku, that's a serious the thing. The late um, Rashid Yekini. Yeah, Hitman Rashid Yekini, yes. the striker. The late um, um, Ajibade, Ajibade Baba Aladi. Oh, so I didn't know he's dead. Babalade is dead. Yeah, he's dead. He died last year, I think September. Oh, okay. or two years ago, yeah. Okay. Ajibadi Babalade. Yeah, yeah you're right. That, that was a great Nigerian yeah. team. Arguably the best ever squad. They won the Olympics. They won the and Olympics in 1996. Oh, it was 96. 96 okay. Yeah. Well, that, that's where Kanu came up. Kanu came up. Yeah, you know, yeah. Kanu was part of the Japan 93 squad mm -hmm, mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. they beat us on the 17th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Japan 93 oh, squad. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. so you, you rate from your, your, your research. Nigeria, we should give them up to semi finals. They are always. They are always. You think that from the first round of games we should give senegal some time they'll come yeah, up yeah. Uh, uh, you think ghana we're gonna win uh, you know Zebla was telling us that the striker is coming to join the team 
a midfielder is coming yeah, to join Mohamed the team. Kudus. Yes, and yeah. uh, it's expected that when he comes, yeah. he will be able to give us more oil in the midfield. And so Thomas Pate will have a partner mm. yeah, to exchange balls and to, and to dummy the opponent. And then the day you and his brother Jordan will have the opportunity to score. You do you agree with that op optimism? I think with the inclusion of Mohamed Kudu, it's going, to, it's going to be of immense help to our mm. team. But quite apart from that, I think we are lacking. There are some loopholes within our team. Number one, our goalkeeper is not up to this, that stage. Who, who is he? The, the beautiful Jojo man. Jojo Wallacott. Jojo uh, Wallacott, he, is, 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 he plies his trade with Swindon, Swindon Town. A fourth tier side in England. Oh, Swindon Town. Swindon Town. Tier four. Tier four. Meaning, they have, you know, they have the English Premiership. Yeah, I know. That's they, the tier they, they one. Championship. The two. Championship. Tier League two, one. League one. League the two. Tier three. So, League two. Swindon is it League two? Town. League two. Oh. So plays with the likes of Exeter City and the likes. But the so this has goalkeeper should be better than him. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't but they? I think we are we are having some very good goalkeepers. A typical example. But he didn't is, commit any blunders yesterday. Though. Yeah, he didn't I, commit any one blunders. One thing was he was really panicking yesterday. You, you notice if that you, if you watch him yesterday, mm. you can see that the stage was quite bigger to him. Mm. Whenever he receives the pass, he cannot get the composure to relax and start the ball. Then we build up from the back. Like, let's say he has the ball, our right fullback and the Yadom mm. has dashed. Or maybe Babaraman mm. or some of the center, defend, center defenders pass the ball to them, they will start to build from the back. He How always he take the it? long balls. Throwing or kicking? Yes, he, kick ball. he just kick the balls. At times he go to throw or at times he lands on a different situation where you see the Moroccans picking the second balls. And, with, you know, in football, when you, are going to, when you are going to lay your tactics on the field of play, you need to be strategic. Mm -hmm. When you decide to take long balls, you need to have a focal point. Who is going to be the man to box or to challenge those defenders? Previously, we have someone like Asamoah Jan mm -hmm. who was doing it that. You can see he will rumble with those defenders. But right now, Jordan Ayu is not that in that category. But he has the physique for it. Yeah. Jordan does that in England. Like he, he, he has the physique know, for it. Dede Ayu is very good in the air. Yes, even though he's short. Ahead of, ahead of Jordan Ayew. Yeah. So if like we were having someone like someone with the caliber of Asamoah Jan, who is going to box or he's or he's going to rumble with those defenders, we can decide to be taking the long. Let me ask you the controversial saw, question saw, about Jan. Something. Let me yeah. let me ask you the controversial yeah. question about Jan. Should he have been on the field? No, no, no. Right now, right now, we don't need him because even his physique level, just even take his shape. I, I think Jan has become too fat right now. He can't even yeah, run. but if we were thinking about we taking him to the City tournament, last season. yeah, he wasn't good. Probably to go there to and give some pep talks, but for him to go and play, I'm sorry, he can't play. I don't think so. We okay. saw him at Legon Cities. Mm -hmm. We saw him at Legon Cities last season. He wasn't convincing. The only thing that he did was to give someone a sulia within the season. He even failed to score. Okay, so with with Dan out on your on your yeah. cards, let's move on to the analysis. So. Uh, uh, will Ghana do well? Can we do well? Is it a we coaching can. problem? Many people are berating the coach for doing a substitution, three substitutions. Yeah, he did in the it quite late. He did it quite late. After yeah. we have considered a goal in the eighty-second minute, yeah. and after the, it is believed that our second-half play was not at par, it could have been better. Uh, he didn't notice it, and he brought a substitution yeah. too late. How did you make that? How did you uh, evaluate that? I think he, he he thought maybe the game was going to end in a draw. Yeah, but he saw the 82nd yes. goal coming. Yeah, like, he saw that, but, but like, he thought the game was going to end in. Milo is a defensive coach. So he always likes to build the base. Mm -hmm. He wants to have he a strong... He doesn't want to lose. He, was, he wants to have a strong defense. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, you saw clearly that those who kept us within the game were our midfielders and the defense. Mm -hmm. Probably that magnificent, magnificent save from Jojo Walakot also kept... The score line at one nil. You know, mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. did a one splendid save. Yeah. So that's how Milo plays. He always likes to build the base. Quite apart from that, Milo wants to soak the pressure. Then decided, then he decides to take hit you on the counter. But yesterday we were lacking ideas. Immediately you see these our PC wingers in the shape of Joseph Pencil and then Kamal Din Suleimana. Whenever they take the ball, Jordan Ayu has also dropped. So there is no focal point. Why was Jordan dropping when the, when the wingers were going? You know, quite... He should be the arrowhead, yeah. shouldn't he? So you know, the wingers are going, he should be pacing and looking at them yeah, and be the arrowhead know. so they can throw it in front. Yeah. He can run and dummy and step back. The ball yeah. comes back and he can hit. I don't know... So what was the I training? Don't know, I don't know whether you've realized this. Since... Was it last season or two seasons right now? Even at the club side, Jordan is not being given an opportunity to be to like arrowhead. arrowhead. 
Yeah, but he, in the, Ghana, the, the, he should, they should give him that. You know, you know, it's because we don't have someone like that. Jordan always plays very well when you have someone who is going to partner, like a typical striker with the caliber of a Samojan. So we Jordan saw, is a second striker? Yes, Jordan probably like a winger, maybe running from the flanks or playing just behind the striker. Oh, that's his, that's, that's his that's, thing. That's where you're going to see Jordan very well. He's not an arrowhead striker. He's like, when you're going to depend on him... So like, he's a winger striker, like Sadio yes, Mane. Uh -huh. Like uh, Mohamed Salah. Mohamed Salah. Okay. So, okay. like, we were not having someone to lead us. So he's not a... So... He's it, not a Marco Van Basten. Yes. He's not a Wayne Rooney. Yeah. Oh, I see. Even Wayne Rooney, at times, play, they were just... At Salah Ferguson was when using... When Van, Van, Van Persie came Persie, in, he they played were just, Rooney behind him. Yes, he, yeah. he was really even well. in midfield. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he has the ability to so take a So Van Persie along is what you call an arrowhead, complete yes. arrowhead. Marco arrowhead. Van Basten. Did he drop by a typical... Yeah, yeah, drop by. Yes, 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 yes. That striker, striker. Lukaku. Yes. Oh, Lukaku, Chelsea was yes. happy. You mentioned his name. Yes. <laughs> Luis Suarez. Yeah, Luis Suarez. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. This, these are so what those... kind of player then is Dede himself? Is he a number 10? So he's a Dede, midfielder? Dede, Dede can play the number 10 in the wings. But one thing is, right now, he lacks the pace. Unlike which, the which Dede was, that we used to know. Which was his strength? Yes. His strength he had always been the pace. He was pacing back in the days. Like his father. Yes. His strength is a pace. But you know, he's getting old right now. So Dede cannot run like we used to know. Mm. I don't know whether... You've had the opportunity of watching this game. Ghana versus Rwanda under 20. At the AFCON under 20 level in 2009. The one we won? Yes, the one we won. The final? Yes. I remember the we game. We won the Af AFCON and went to Egypt and conquered the whole world. Yes, yes. The world Becoming country. the one and the only F country. Yes. That first game against, against Cameroon, mm -hmm. it was a one-all draw. Anyone should, should, have, should get the opportunity to watch the DIU on that day. How pacey he was. How he was, he was able to take on the Cameroonians. Another example. Even even can 2008. Yes, yes. can 2000 when he came in as a substitute. Yes, apart from that, great. 2010, in that game against Australia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was there. I was there. In that game I was, against I think Australia. It was Blue Fountain in South Blue, Africa. Yeah, no, I, I it, was it was Rustenburg. Rustenburg. Royal Bafokeng Stadium in Rustenburg. I was there. I was there. I was there. He was yeah. absolutely magnificent. And then that, that day, if we had lost the game, we would have been out of the World Cup. Yes. 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 Yeah, he was good. Check was the good. day are you? Mm. But as time goes on. His pacey nature declines. But he also so has... He's not able the, to run. But he also has the has, instinct. He has good ball control. Yes, he has the instinct. He is also... He's able to peg what the footballers call peg. Yeah. So that he can retain the ball for a yeah. long time. He's, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a ball holder. Yeah, he holds so, the ball. So we can use all of that. He, he also gives us option when we are without the ball. You know, he has the instincts to drop down mm -hmm. and attack and tackle very well. Yesterday, you saw that when they were floating the balls with the corner kicks, he was most of the times in the box. And there was some occasions that he had his head on the ball. Mm -hmm. And it helped very well. But he said he had not been well. Should we, like, no, should we not, look not, at that and the, hope that? I'm not, I'm not saying he has not been. Like, I'm saying he's getting older. Mm -hmm. So maybe the pacey nature that he was having back in the days is not So you think that the lack of a striker in the Black Stars team is, is, is going to it's, cost it's, us? It's really, help, it's really worrying us. We took Richmond, Boachi Adam, and then Benjamin Tete. These are the arrowhead or the front liners that you can see. A lot of people were clamoring for Joel Famier, one of the strikers. He was former player of Asuka Deportivo, a first division mm -hmm. side in Kumasi. I remember watching a him. A first division player? Yeah. Like, they want him to he, play for like, Black no, Stars? No, 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 I'm coming. I said he was. Okay, where does he, he play was. now? Now he is with one of the um, first year clubs in, in, in Russia. Yeah, second Russia? tier league. Yeah. Okay. Not their premier He's league. called Famier. Yes, Joel Famier. He's a striker or yes, he's a striker. He's a striker. He's a stri is good? He's a striker. Very good. He's a clinical finisher. I Has he ever played for Ghana? Yeah, he's during the days of CK Akono mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as the coach. Just mm -hmm. recently, he used mm -hmm. to be calling him. He had the opportunity of playing some couple of games. I remember this we played Morocco. Man, this, this young man we saw at the Accra Sports Stadium, the Kotoko winger, yeah. who delighted everybody in that has Kotoko game. Where is he? Oh, Matthew Enim Kujo. Matthew Enim Kujo. He's now he? with Dundee United in Dundee. Scotland. Dundee the Scotland. United in Scotland. Why is he not playing for the Black Stars? He's an amazing winger. Yeah, if yeah, he yeah. still has he's, he's now 18, I think. He's yes, he's, when I saw him, he was 16 yeah, at the yeah, yeah, he's now 18. He played for Kotoko against yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, totally yeah. amazing winger. He was now, he's now 18. Does he play for the under 21? No, we called him in the under 20 that went to mm -hmm. that, that recent Afcon under 21 mm -hmm. in, was it in Mauritania? Or Mauritania. Did he come? That we won. Yeah, he was there. He was there. He, alongside this young, sensational new winger, Abdul Isako Fahad Fatau. Mm -hmm. But why is he not in the team? Why is he could you not in this team? No, maybe it's, it's all brought down to technical decision. I think the technical... Okay, let's come back to another controversial so I think, question. I think Joel Famier, mm -hmm. I watched him in a... Chan, you, know, you know that Chan tournament? That tournament yes, yes, for yes, yes, locally yes. based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was with Asukwa Deportivo. Mm -hmm. 
in 2015 at the Babayara Sports Stadium. Mm -hmm. I was there. He scored twice. We won against the, the local elephants of Cote d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we lost 1-0 and we failed to make it to, um, to Rwanda 2016. Mm -hmm. And right now, he's in Russia. He went to Turkey before going to Russia. He's a clinical finisher, a typical striker, but he's not been called. He, he, I think he was on the bench in that game against Zimbabwe in Ethiopia during that. Okay, so you think that the Black Stars team we I see think we could have been better? Scorer. Could have been better if we were calling other people. Yeah, you, you I think I think our scouting network wasn't quite good. Mm -hmm. We have a problem with our right back. Since Harrison Afo left after twenty, I was going to ask you about Harrison yes. Afo. What's the problem? Is he now too old? Like you're saying, the day you maybe he can play. Harrison can play. He can play. But because what's the he's, 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 he's play, he was playing alongside the day. And this one, Jonathan Mensah. What's the problem then? Maybe scouting network or they decided to overlook him. Where so does he play? He's in um, MLS, Major League Soccer, United States of America. Oh, he's Colorado? going to United States. Yes. But you go there when you retire, so he's probably retired. And there, are, there are players who are playing competitively over there. You watch that Cameroon game. Mm -hmm. They made they, this, this the, the tournament that we game, played. The 2-1. One. The 2-1. One. Yeah. The four JC of Cameroon, mm -hmm. Nuhum Tolu. He plays his trade in MLS with Seattle Sounders. I see. He, he, he plays creditably well that day. Mm, so what know. shows you that maybe if we have a player who is playing his trade in the MLS, he cannot play? If we had Harrison on the right, Barbara Man on the it, left, he, he it would might, have been quite better. Be better yeah. And the Yadom, you don't know his quality. Mm -hmm. He can't move. He can't tackle. He lacks pace. Whenever you have a pace, we, let me tell you, this is our setup. If we have a team or an opponent that uses the weight, we will always suffer. Where, is, where does Yadom play? He's, he's a right back. Where? Which team? No, he, he plays his trade in QPR. Mm, Redding. Redding. He alongside oh, he's Bamaraman. the Redding guy. Yeah, he Bamaraman alongside. Bamaraman is yeah, at Redding they as are, well. They are, they, are, they are two and three. Redding. So the Redding two and three are the two and three for yes, the Black Stars. Yes, yes, yes. And the other. Bamaraman was not that impressive with his crosses on the opening day because he, I know, know him. Ba and he, that's his strength. Bamaraman. He's I like think, Celestine Babayaro. Yes, Bamaraman. But he's not coming. Injury, injury affected his career. Mm -hmm. Quite apart from that, I think, he, I think he took a wrong decision from moving to Augsburg to Chelsea. It was too early. I think it was too early. Most of the times, you have to take your time as a player. In football, we used to have something that we see as a young player. Your currency in football is playing time. Mm -hmm. If you are coming up, you have to get a, a team where you can always get the chance to play consistently. As the time goes, you'll be seeing those big, big teams will be chasing you. So from Augsburg, AS Roma came calling. And that was the time um, Ashley Cole was leaving AS Roma for MLS. So the position was there. Barbara Man, you just come from Augsburg, come and take the position. He decided for the left back of Roma. For the left back. Yeah. He decided to move to Chelsea. And that was the time they brought on board Felipe Luis, who was part of the 2014 team of Atletico Madrid that lost to Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. He was being put on the bench, and Cesar Aspiliqueta was the one playing the left back. Yes, yes, for Chelsea. Let alone yes. you, Barbara Man. Mm -hmm. So it affected his career. Okay, so the caliber so, of the of the uh, options for Chelsea, left back and right back, yeah. that Barbara Man threw himself in was such that he was not going to succeed. Yeah, he, wa he was not going to get that playing time. Mm -hmm. And quite apart from that, there were games he made some mistakes. Mm -hmm. I remember, at, was it against Sunderland or Southampton? He made a mistake and probably was whipping. Mourinho was just... So give us your conclusion summary. Friday, are we going to win? What should we do to win? I think we have, we have what it takes to beat the Gabonese. Mm -hmm. Gabon, they are not quite good. They don't have the history when it comes to the Nations Cup. Their only achievement is making it to the quarterfinals. I think in 2012 and then 27, 2012. Uh, 2012, yeah. When they co-hosted the competition with the Equatorial Guinea. And unfortunately for them, their top marksman, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, was not there. Mario Lemina was not there. I think they will probably be, be back on that on Friday against the Black Stars of Ghana. So these are the guys who are going to worry us. But they have the likes of Aaron Bupenza, Denis Buanga, Bruno Ikwele Manga at the back. So these are the weapons that they can probably use to hunt us. But I think we have what it takes. Ghana, we are always slow, slow starters. Paul, mm -hmm. in the 90s, our match day once at the AFCON, we used to be winning. In 1992, we won 1-0 against Zambia. Mm -hmm. Abir Pele was on target. In 1994, we won 1-0 against Guinea. Siki Akono was on target. In 1996, match day one, we made Lele Zeli found the Lakou d'Ivoire, we beat them 2 nil. Abidi Pili, Sam Johnson. Mm -hmm. In 1998, despite the fact that we were booted out of the group stages after winning, even though we won our match, they won against, Bur against Tunisia and Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. First goal from Alex Nyaku and then Mohamed Gagou. But since entering of the 21st century, from 2000 up to date, 
we've won only three of our match D1 games at the afternoon. Oh, that's interesting. Since 2000, up uh, to beat. Well, we won 2008, that one we hosted. Yes, yes. We beat, uh, so we beat Guinea, Guinea. 2-1. Yeah. Was it 2-1? 2-1, yeah. yeah. We beat Guinea in 2008. We beat Botswana in 2012, 1-0. And then we beat Uganda, 1-0 in 2017. But Apart from that, we have been drawing or losing. Drawing or losing. When we caused the competition, somebody calls us a text. He says that Wakaso mm. is he in the team. Yes, yeah, in the team. Did he play? No, he did. He, he, he never even put on a JC on that day. Okay. I think they. They Wakaso should act as the uh, register. Okay. To free Pate, and kudos up further the pitch. He says he disagrees with you, Joe. Our family is not that good. But he think. What do you think about the Wakaso connection? You know, Wakasu is a very good tackler, mm -hmm. and whenever he's, he's in Ghana JC, you see, you see him showing the presence. He's a midfielder, defensive a midfielder. midfielder. Yeah, defensive. Mm -hmm. But one problem with Wakasu is his tacklings. Most of the times, majority of his tacklings are fouls. So yellow and, and potential red. Yes, the most of the, But like, he has the physicality, the presence. Mm -hmm. He always likes to take the long balls. And also when there's an opportunity, he will take a shot. I remember that tender bolt he scored against Guinea. Mm -hmm. In that 2017 Afghan qualifying Tamale, it was absolutely magnificent. That, that game saw Samojan clapping. He was just shaking his head. Back to the point. I said since 2000, up to date, our match day once, either we draw or lose, apart from those three. So we shouldn't be too worried yes. about this one. So, you know, we drew with Cameroon when we hosted the competition Ghana-Nigeria in 2000. 1-1, Mark Vivian for the late scored the goal and Kwame you equalized for us. In Do you have messages on sports? Okay, so get them ready. In 2002, against, against Morocco, this same team, in Mali, we drew goalless draw. Mm -hmm. In 2004, we, we did not qualify to Tunisia, so mm -hmm. we, did not quali we did not qualify. So in 2006, if you're going to remember, we, beat, we were beaten 1 0 by Nigeria. Tai -tai the Egypt won. Yes, the mm -hmm. 85th minutes, free kick scored by Tai Tai. Yes, 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 yes. And yes. then, you know, in 2008, we won. Mm -hmm. In 2010, when we were in the finals, our first game against Lezini Fan de la Kudiba, we lost 3 1. We were supposed to meet Togo in the first game, but you remember that Kabinda incident? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so 2010, we were in the final of the of Yeah, the we were in the finals. Uh, so we, play, we were supposed to play three matches, but mm -hmm. due to the incident, the unfortunate incident, so Togo pulled but out. But we got all the way to the so, final. Yeah, so we played two games. in 2010's final? It was Egypt. Penalties or regular? No, 1-0. One 85th one minute score goal five, goal scored by Mohamed Nagy Gedu. Mm. So you remember, you, we lost 3-1 against Les Elephants de la Côte d'Ivoire. Mm -hmm. We beat Burkina Faso 1-0. They, they, they scored the only goal. In the quarterfinals, Asamojan scored against Angola. In, in the semifinals, we scored against Asamo, the same Asamojan score against Nigeria. And unfortunately, we lost against Egypt in the finals mm -hmm. in 2010. In 2012, Against Bos against Botswana in, in match day one we won that day. Jomensa was shown the red card, even mm -hmm. though it was a hard fought win for us. It was a pirate victory. It was a victory that we sweated to have it. In 2013 in South Africa, we drew two two with the Democratic Republic of Congo after mm -hmm. scoring two goals. Mm -hmm. Kujua Samoa Sam and, and, and then Ajiman Bedu were on target. What happened to Kujua Samoa? He can't play anymore. Right now he's unattached. Oh, he's unattached. He's unattached. Oh, that's, uh, that's sorry. For how many seasons? Just this season. You know, la after leaving Inter Milan, he went to Cagliari. So all of a sudden, I think oh, the terminated. He doesn't play? No, no, right now he's not attached. I don't know whether he's going to make a move subsequently or as the season unfolds. You know, you know, we are in the winter break, mm -hmm. the winter transfer window. Mm -hmm. January has not ended yet. So he can probably make a move. But make then he should have been at the tournament so that people can see him. Mm, I think the quality is quite, quite down right now. Oh, but I from what we you saw. You remember in 2019, the last Afghan, he was there. Mm -hmm. We didn't see that usual Kudra Samoa that we used to know. Mm -hmm. We did not see him as such. So in, in 2015 or so, we were in the finals. We lost our first game. Hasn't his career been affected by the massive change from a midfielder to a left back that the Europeans put him through? Yeah, I think it's, it's something that Kwesi Apia did not manage it very well. Mm -hmm. It was Antonio Conte who was using him as the left wing back. Mm -hmm. When you are going to play tactics on the field of play, if you are going to play wing back, it means you are half seven, half two. The, that's an individual. Yes. Yes. So that's very difficult. Yes. In that setup, you need to have three center backs. Okay. One on the right, one on the left, one in the center. Mm -hmm. 
So that's those, the three five two. That's the three five two. Okay. So this was the, very difficult to yes, play. This was the tactics that was being used by Antonio Conte mm -hmm. at Juventus. Mm -hmm. So Kojo Samoa, the coach saw it, saw it that he fits perfectly well. Okay, so he was playing a three and eleven. Yes. Half three, half eleven. Half three, half eleven. Mm -hmm. So whenever you see this setup, he will be moving and be coming back. Mm -hmm. So whenever his team is under attack, he just drops back. Then he he's alongside he alongside the wing the right wing back. They all come. So they join the three, then they become, become a five men. Mm -hmm. Already they are three. They are three, so five. So we'll be seeing them overshadowing those opponents mm -hmm. or creating someone within tactic within the video analyst would say overload. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, Kosiapia decided to he use him, but not as a left wing back, but as a left back. So it disallowed him from moving forward. And we all know his usual instincts. Kojua Samoa likes to move forward. He dribbles well, he passes well, and he shoots very well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So true. as he was being drifted at that back line or in the left part of that defense, it limited his quality. So as the time goes on, we are not seeing the usual Kojua Samoa that we used to know. It's very interesting because so the point you're making is that left wing back is different from left back. Yes, yes. Left back is like we see up here himself. Yes, left back. You know, left back, you know, modern day, modern day games have changed. There Completely, are different yeah, trends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there have been philosophies. Any mm -hmm. coach and how he likes to play his game. Mm -hmm. There are coaches that we call, they are pragmatic. Mm -hmm. A typical example like Jose Mourinho, mm -hmm. our own Milovan Rajavac. He likes to soak the pressure, be at the back, catch you on the break. So he always wants to have pacey players who can take on okay. the ball. Whilst we're in, I think Ghanaians are interested in the question. Yeah. Are we going to beat Gabon on Friday? I'm pretty sure. Very, why, very well. Why are you, you confident? Know? Ghana is the most difficult team to play against on match day two in the history of the AFCON. We've won most of our match day two most, games. Most, most. On the only two occasions that we've lost was in 1984 in Boaké. In 1984. In 1982, did we win our match day two? We drew. We drew. We drew. And we won we, the, the we, third yes, game. Yes, we drew. Third game against Tunisia? Yeah. Or was it Algeria? You, you, no, it was, so we drew we were, against we, were, we, we drew we with Libya 2-2. Two, two. Two, two. Then we drew with Cameroon, Cameroon. goalless. Yes. Then we beat somebody 3-1. Yeah. It was Tunisia or Algeria. Yes. Yeah. George Alhassan scored, Al scored, mm -hmm. I think, two goals that So night. 84 and mm -hmm. then 1998. Mm -hmm. These are the only two games on yeah. March Day 2 that we've lost. You remember Burkina 98, we lost 2-1 mm -hmm. against Togo. The yeah. Hawks of Togo. These were the days when they were having this former Ash goal goalkeeper. I don't know whether I remember. Nibombi Waki. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the Waki. And then they were having one striker, Nusuji Kosi. Mm -hmm. They were all playing their trade at Goldfields, then Goldfields, now called Ashanti Gold. Yeah. Yeah. So Togo and Algeria are the only teams to have ever beaten us on March the 2. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty sure we are, that we are going to make it today. <laughs>